Greetings everyone. In this video presentation I'm covering a topic which I'm referring to as the Illuminati and the Law of Attraction. These are two popular words or phrases that people are using a lot in different contexts. The Law of Attraction, of course, is a metaphysical principle the idea that like energy attracts like energy. What you put out is what you get back. So being conscious of what frequency you're generating, what thoughts, what beliefs, what intentions you are putting out into creation, and how that is relating to whatever you're experiencing, whatever comes into your experience from the external world. The Illuminati, this is a rather complex subject since the word has been used by multiple groups, multiple secret societies throughout history. In the current era, the concept of the Illuminati tends to focus on the idea of an overarching control structure for planet Earth. So a secret society or a central authority that in one sense controls other authorities or secret societies that's acting as a hidden hand manipulating different things occurring in our world. Anyone who begins to look into this subject in depth who studies history and current events will tend to come to accept the idea that there is some sort of power structure of this nature that's operating. For those that are looking for a lot of background information about that subject, one good author to begin with would be David Icke. Also, Stuart Swerdlow has written extensively about this there's a number of articles and audio recordings you can find online by various people who report being whistleblowers or defectors from this Illuminati secret society structure. The main theme of this is that there are certain families and bloodlines who over many generations have set themselves up as this central power or authority to govern civilization. And they do this using both occultism, what we would think of as pagan religious practices, in combination with organized crime practices, so mafia-type techniques, Machiavellian strategies, for exerting their influence and domination over society. Of course, if we're not part of their culture, it's hard to see or understand things from their point of view, how they are programmed to think, to explain or justify the way they are handling things. From their point of view, perhaps, they are the rightful governors of our planet. They may feel that they deserve to be in charge of things, to decide the fate of civilization, to direct the course of human civilization. This idea seems to be something that's been handed down to them from extraterrestrials who have been influential in the development of human civilization. The idea that there is a divine right of kings, this concept of royalty, of royal blood, of blue bloods and things of that nature, can generally be traced back to these extraterrestrial influences. And these families who currently consider themselves to be rulers, to be the ones directing things on earth, see themselves as the, um, what's the word we would look for here, the descendants 
of these extraterrestrial beings. So they consider themselves to have this royal blood that they've inherited from these beings who have been interacting with Earth for many millennia or perhaps even millions of years. As I mentioned, the way they attain and maintain their power tends to involve occult mystical practices. So they do learn about spiritual laws or principles and how to apply them in order to create or manifest things here in the physical plane. They also use what would often be looked at as dark side types of control mechanisms using things like blackmail, bribery, entrapment, using mind control of various forms, including deliberate abuse of children to put those children into a state where they are suggestible and where they are also attached or bonded to the authority figures who are abusing them. This is a culture in many ways based on fear. There is fear for anyone who might think of trying to break free of that organization or culture. Just like someone who's a member of a gang will be threatened if they try to leave that gang. People who are part of this Illuminati system would be threatened with some very unpleasant consequence if they try to break free. There are many of them within those types of groups or organizations who really would rather not be there, who would like to break free if there was the right opportunity to assist them in doing so. If there was some other force or group who would protect them and help them out if they make that effort to escape. Now, we concern ourselves with how the Illuminati and the Law of Attraction relate to one another. We'll first consider that the Law of Attraction applies to everything occurring in manifested reality. Everything in some way is being created by consciousness. Our thoughts, our emotions, our beliefs, these energies are rippling out into creation and bringing into this manifest reality different things that we experience. The psychology of those who are in the power positions who are setting the tone for what the Illuminati and those types of groups are doing tend to have a preoccupation with control. So their psychology is one where they are afraid of not being in control, of not having enough. In a sense, they are overcompensating for some deep wound within themselves, for some deep fear that they carry within. And by trying to have control over everything, by accumulating massive amounts of material wealth, being in positions where people look up to you and give you their energy or their power, it helps these individuals avoid confronting their own deepest fears, their own deepest pain or wound. However, the reality of what they're doing is causing additional harm to themselves and others. It's like an addiction. The more they pursue this power, this wealth and control, the more attached to it they become. And of course, in order to attain and maintain that, they're doing many things that are inflicting pain and harm upon others. And this may lead other people, other individuals, to fall into a similar psychological pattern where they may play either the victim or perpetrator role. The Illuminati understand ways of 
using the law of attraction to manifest things they desire. However, one way that they are doing this is by using mind control techniques to manipulate the consciousness of the mass of humanity so that the mass consciousness is actually helping co-create what the Illuminati desire to create. One common way they do this is by provoking fear. They may provoke fear by creating some type of terror event, by creating some type of economic collapse, some type of natural disaster, and yes, this can be artificially induced. There are many ways to provoke fear, even something like the fear about global warming and climate change is a fear that they can foster and manipulate in order to get population to support what their agenda would be. And their agenda is increasingly centralized control over the planet and its population. You see consolidation happening on many levels whether it's corporations consolidating, governments consolidating. And what tends to happen is people who are in a state of fear are not able to use their critical thinking as much as people who are not in a state of fear. When we're in that strong fear emotion, we react more instinctively more in a survival state of fight or flight or freeze. So we re react in a way where we're looking for safety or protection. And if you have an authoritarian power structure that's offering to provide protection, people may go along with that. They may give their energy, they may give their power to that protector. We can look at our individual psychology as well as group psychology and see that this issue of being either dependent or independent is an important part of our psychological development. As a child, we have parents who are there to nurture and protect us, to keep us safe, to guide us, they have more knowledge than us, and so they are a resource, something that we have to rely upon to make our way in the world. We trust our parents' guidance in general, until, of course, things occur in our lives that would lead us to question or challenge it. When we become teenagers and as we become adults, we start to question that authority more. And a normal process of development involves becoming more self-reliant and more independent. Not always seeking someone to provide that safety and protection for us, but feeling more confident in our own ability to cope with the common stresses and challenges of life. So that developmental process of, is one where we move from very high levels of dependence to increasingly lesser levels of dependence. Looking at the society that we live in, we often see those who are in positions of power and in groups that work to maintain those structures of power attempting to promote increased dependence within the public. So developing systems where people become more reliant on large organizations like governments and corporations, where that power is being given increasingly to these centralized authorities. Considering it in a psychological sense, it's almost as though they're attempting to lead people to regress rather than progress. Of 
course, if you're attached to being in that parental authority position, then you would try to keep those that you're governing or having authority over in a more regressed state, in a more childlike state, where they have lots of fear, lots of insecurity, and they will come to you and ask for protection. So this is one general form of mind control that's used, provoking fear and then offering protection. However, the secret societies are also practicing very pervasive forms of mind control within their own organization, within their own ranks. They provoke fear within each other as a way to ensure that there is loyalty and compliance. People who are afraid of being harmed if they go against the group are going to continue to support that group and its agenda. Of course, this whole process, this whole psychological paradigm that's occurring with this type of power structure is going against the flow of creation. Coming back to the idea of metaphysical principles and laws, we have this law of attraction. There's also a principle of intention, creating with deliberate intent. There's another principle about allowance, sometimes referred to as the law of allowance, which really means that we have to let go and let creation unfold rather than trying to minutely control everything. And then there's a law of balance. And when you're working against the natural flow of creation, when you have a very imbalanced agenda, it takes a lot of energy and effort and attempts to minutely control things to hold things together to get your plan to manifest. Because creation itself, in a sense, would work to unravel your plans. So you have to put a lot of energy and effort, a lot of force and influence, in order to make things go the way you want them to. And no matter how much energy and effort you place into that, ultimately, you are not going to succeed, at least not in the long term. And this brings us to the crux of what we're talking about here, because the Illuminati have been around for many, many years, and they still haven't really reached their goals, their idea of a one-world government where they have solid control of everything where there is no challenge to their authority and where they can feel safe and comfortable in their position of being rulers over the people of the planet. What's actually occurring now is they are attracting into their experience other forces and influences which in some way reflect what they are doing. So they attract other factions and groups that are kind of mirrors of themselves, other controlling type influences who seek power and domination. So it's kind of like a conflict among mafia groups where one group has to struggle against another to have control over a territory. This is occurring with the Illuminati and other groups on Earth. And it's also occurring involving extraterrestrial groups. And of course, you also have more positively oriented groups, ones who in some way wish to promote their more utopian type vision of a society, a more peaceful, prosperous vision that would appeal more to the general public. Those types of groups also tend to rise up 
when there's someone or some group trying to oppose authoritarian control. And we have a lot of pushback in this sense from people in the population who are coming together to say that they are resisting, they don't want that type of centralized authority imposed. This becomes a very complex situation. We have these different forces working both with and against each other at various times. And we do want to be aware <clears throat> that any time you attempt to impose your agenda upon others without their informed consent, you are working against this law of allowance. If we look at what's been happening on our planet, we've had a variety of secretive groups over many centuries and millennia seeking to impose their view of what's best for this planet and for human civilization, and doing so without in any open or direct way obtaining the approval of the population as a whole. If we consider that there are approximately 7 billion human beings on planet Earth, and perhaps a few thousand or no more than maybe a hundred thousand people are at the core of that control structure, then if that control structure is seeking to impose its view and not asking for a vote <coughs> by these 7 billion people, then they are really not allowing humanity to choose its own destiny. They are imposing something on humanity as though humanity were their infant children who didn't know how to think and form their own opinions and make their own choices. Looking at this from a psychological perspective, it seems rather immature of them to be operating in that manner. However, all of humanity does need to take responsibility for their role in this situation. If people were more conscious and more mature, they wouldn't be as easily manipulated and drawn to follow whatever agendas are being directed whatever agendas are being imposed. If people are being lied to and they're accepting those lies, if people are being conned and falling for those cons, then this implies that they are not that wise and mature yet. They are not fully able to make these wise, intelligent choices that could improve the state of affairs on the planet. So rather than placing blame on a person or group who is acting in this authoritarian or manipulative way, we may want to first look at our own role in this scenario, see how we ourselves fall for these deceptions, and to some extent we've all been manipulated, we've all been conned, we've all accepted something we were told that we later discovered was not really true. We've all given our power away to people who are manipulating us by driving us into a state of fear and then offering their protection. This has happened in some way, in some shape or form to everyone, as this is an archetypal pattern that is part of the dynamics of human experience. With the law of attraction, we are all invoking that law in each moment, whether we're doing it consciously or not. We are all attracting, attracting into our experience things that reflect the patterns that we carry within our own consciousness. Therefore, it's important to self-examine 
to develop self-awareness and look at what we hold to in our consciousness, what beliefs we have, what emotions that we are generating or vibrating with. We are co-creating this reality and if we really want to change things, it truly does begin with ourselves. Those groups that we may give labels to, like the Illuminati, have spent much time and effort studying some of these universal principles and gaining an understanding of how they can use those principles to achieve their material aims or goals. If we don't agree with their goals, with their values or priorities, it's important for us to strengthen our own minds, our own consciousness, and to use our own energy and intention to help foster more desirable goals, things that we see as greater values or priorities, the world that we would like to co-create. If we're not mastering our own consciousness, if we're not setting our own intentions, if we're not using the law of attraction to manifest things that we've chosen, then we're more vulnerable to others who would seek to manipulate us to help harness our energy toward accomplishing their goals. This has been, to a great extent, what has been occurring on planet Earth for a very long time. We are at a point where many people are becoming more conscious of these dynamics, where the lies and the deceptions are not succeeding as much as they used to, where many people are awakening to see beyond illusions that have held humanity in a role of subservience for a long time. I commend each of you who are watching this video for taking on this opportunity, this chance to really break free of some old paradigms, to empower yourselves and to help co-create a more positive, a more abundant, a more harmonious world. We don't need to be angry or resentful or the Illuminati or any other individuals or groups of people. Everyone and everything that we encounter here has a role and purpose. It brings some up opportunity for each of us to learn and evolve, to become more aware of who we are, of what we value, of what we can accomplish or manifest. This reality is one of contrast, one of polarity, and therefore when we see things that we're not pleased with, things that we find unpleasant or undesirable, that's a stepping stone toward helping us identify what we do desire, what we would find pleasant, what we do see as fun, enjoyable, or fulfilling. For those that are interested in learning more about these subjects, more about personal growth, spiritual development, the world that we live and exist in, I invite you to watch more videos on my YouTube channel. And you are also welcome to visit my website at www.phinsights.com. That's P H I N s-i-g-h-t-s dot c-o-m I wish everyone a wonderful day. Namaste.